Hi, I'm Fox San Antonio's Jessica Headley. And I'm Ryan Wolf. Our, our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is to, to serve, serve our, our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso Las Cruces communities. Eastern Iowa communities. Mid-Michigan communities. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these things simply aren't true without checking facts first. first. In March 2018, millions of people around the U.S. noticed something strange. Local news anchors from all over the country were reciting the exact same script on air word for word. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about trouble and trying to be responsible one news stories playing in our country. country. That's because all these local news stations are owned by Sinclair Broadcast Group. And Sinclair Broadcast Group had a message they wanted to propagate to the masses. Most people have never heard of this company before. But Sinclair is actually the second biggest television station operator in America. Out of the 600 channels it owns, more than 150 are affiliated to news broadcasters like Fox, ABC, CBS, and NBC. More than 40% of all the homes in America watch the news on a channel owned by Sinclair. Yes, that is right. If you have a message you want the American public to accept, you gotta go to Sinclair Broadcast Group. And during COVID, Sinclair said the script was only there to reinforce their commitment to reporting the facts and avoiding fake news. But we'll let you be the judge of that. And what's scary about all of this is that it still works. What's powerful about the news is that it has this air of authority. It's kind of like when you hear medical advice from a doctor wearing a white coat. Doctors in all parts of the country were asked, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Once again, the brand named most was Camel. Yes, according to this repeated nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. You automatically assume that everything they're saying is true. The same is true with the news. When you wear a decent suit, when you sit in front of a professional looking set, with that signature news sound effect and you say breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. With that very official sounding news anchor voice, the masses will automatically accept everything that spews out of your mouth. There's no way journalists will be lying to us, right? And here's the thing, deep down we all know that it's not just Sinclair News that is like this. I'm sure we've all noticed that a lot of mainstream media sounds similar these days. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. But why is this the case? Why does all the news sound the same? And how do all of these media outlets actually come together and decide, hey, we're all gonna say this next? Stay dangerous and this is the coordinated cartel that is the mainstream media. So you're a journalist at one of the mainstream media outlets like CNN, Fox, or CBS. You spent years in school and college working for a degree. You slaved away at unpaid internships and dead-end jobs at companies no one's ever heard of. And now you finally made it to the big leagues. But the climb isn't over yet. At a company like CNN or Fox, you still have to prove yourself. But in order to do that, you need to break really big stories. But really big stories are hard to come by. You gotta do some real investigative journalism, you gotta work leads, get people to go on record, you gotta put your life on the line. It's a tough and risky life. But what if I told you that there's an alternative? What if I told you that you didn't have to do any work at all and someone would just give you a giant story to report on? Well, that is where daddy government comes in. Some of the biggest and most legendary journalists, like the people that broke the Watergate, Nixon scandal, uh, for example, Bob Woodward, they were given these tips by the FBI. This is Ari David, by the way. He's the founder of Upward News, a newsletter that covers everything the mainstream media doesn't want to cover when it comes to politics. As a journalist, the best sources are going to be the FBI, CIA, and U.S. governments. People that have these leaks, and especially in the intelligence community, they find these journalists, they give them information that will help boost their careers. In turn, the government and the intelligence agencies get whatever narrative they want out into the public. Think about it. If you get information from a random person you know nothing about, you have to spend weeks or even months making sure their story is true. But an FBI agent, a government official, you don't have to break your back verifying their information. The fact that they're the ones giving you the information is enough. All you have to do is write the story and say it came from an anonymous FBI source or an anonymous government official and boom, your job is done and you're climbing up the ladder. If the story ends up being true, you get a massive career boost. And if it ends up being fake, you can easily brush it off. No one's gonna get mad at you. See, if a CIA agent comes to you offering information, you are gonna publish it, no questions asked. Because if you don't publish it, they're just gonna give it to any of the other desperate journalists out there that are also looking for their big break. 
Power corrupts. It's no different for journalists, and especially journalists that work for the mainstream media. As a journalist, your job requires you to have the best information. The intelligence agencies decide to strategically release what they need to manipulate the narrative. But why? Why would the government be so eager to spill the beans to journalists? This is Joseph Alsop. In the 1950s, he was one of the most well-known political journalists in America. And in 1953, he traveled to the Philippines to cover a local election. Except he wasn't asked to go by the newspapers he worked for. He wasn't asked to go by the company of journalists he worked for. No, 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 Joseph was sent to the Philippines by the CIA. Joseph Alsop was one of more than 400 American journalists who secretly did work for the CIA between 1952 and 1977. And it was all part of what the CIA called Operation Mockingbird. This was at the height of the Cold War, when America needed all the help it could get on collecting information on communist governments around the world. And who better to collect all this information than journalists? It was the job of journalists to ask questions and travel to countries that CIA agents would never be allowed to enter. And so the CIA started recruiting journalists to do all sorts of work for them. Some journalists worked as middlemen between the CIA and communist spies. Others shared their notebooks with the CIA so the CIA could decide what they could publish. And in the most extreme cases, journalists were used as full-on CIA operatives. They would sign secrecy pledges and be sent to some of the most dangerous countries in the world to recruit and handle foreigners just like a real agent would. In other cases, they would be given fake information to pass on to foreign government officials. But one of the most important things these CIA journalists did was to influence American public opinion. Think about it this way. If the CIA wanted Americans to think the president of whatever country was evil and that he needed to be toppled, all the CIA had to do was leak a story to one of its journalists, and a few weeks later, every American would be reading about how President X was the most evil communist on earth, giving the CIA the perfect excuse to overthrow the governments. Well, for the past like 60 years in American history, the CIA has been known to all around the globe to manipulate the media. And they do this for political gains. In different countries, what they'll do is they'll actually create media outlets. And the problem with that is it's pretty obvious what's happening there. The people get rightfully concerned about the fact that foreign federal governments are running the state media. And so they also found that they can do this domestically in a much easier way. And one of the things that they realize is we can find journalists, we can give them these leaks, we can give them information that well, they want to report. And so you have this working together, the journalists and the intelligence agencies to disrupt the way that Americans think. Intelligence agencies say this is the narrative. The mainstream media reports on that narrative along with those journalists. And as a result, you have mass manipulation by intelligence agencies domestically. Now, when you imagine all of this, you're probably thinking that all of these journalists were just small time up and coming journalists desperate for work. But that could not be further from the truth. Some of the biggest names in journalism were in on it. We're talking about executives and journalists from the New York Times, Newsweek, New York Herald Tribune, CBS, ABC, and NBC. They were all happily working for the CIA. But then in 1977, Operation Mockingbird was finally exposed by ex-Washington Post writer Carl Bernstein. So suddenly, secretly using journalists to influence America just wasn't an option anymore. But the CIA and the US government was not going to give up that easily. So instead of doing this covertly, they were now just going to do this overtly, just wide in the open. Back in the day, none of these journalists were saying that they were working as assets for the intelligence agencies. They weren't doing that, but they were winning awards and they were creating a serious impact. Today, it's much easier because these mainstream media outlets, CNN, NBC, CBS, what they do is they'll hire former intelligence officials that'll be contributors. So when before they kind of really had to hide and make this kind of influence covert, today it's as obvious as turning on CNN and look who's talking. It's two different former directors of the CIA or the director of the FBI. And one of the open secrets in Washington is that if you are a former director of any kind of intelligence agency, you are never really leaving that role. And so you might have that former part of your name, but you are working in loyalty to that institution. You still talk to the people that are higher ups in there and you still know what kind of information is good to get out and which is bad to get out. So is the CIA and intelligence agency still affecting the mass media today? Yes, and it's never been more obvious. After Operation Mod Mockingbird was exposed, the CIA found a brand new way to get its narrative out to the public. Instead of hiding in the shadows, it would just send all its former directors and agents to become the media's most trusted sources. 
Once you're part of that power structure and once you identify with that class of people, you never really leave it. And a great example of this, and this is pretty unprecedented, is Barack Obama is one of the first presidents to ever decide to stay in DC after leaving. And because he's in DC, he's able to still know what's going on. He still has a vested interest. He still helps other candidates and plays a role in politics. And so for these people that were once at the height of their careers, for example, imagine the former CIA director. He had been at the pinnacle of power in America. For them to to just have all of these secrets to understand everything that's going on and to just go and retire in some farm in Montana, it'll never happen. Once these people are in the system, they're always in the system and they always want to have a role in this. You wouldn't ever relinquish power. Those people don't do it. They know what's going on. They are contributors on these mainstream media outlets because they have skin in the game. They're trying to push a certain narrative. And if they were just regular people, they really wouldn't have the same kind of incentives to go on CNN every night and push a certain agenda. So some of the biggest hoaxes that America in the past couple of years has witnessed has been a result of these former intelligence officials going onto CNN, going onto NBC and just talking, but they can also play a defensive role. And so when we remember the Hunter Biden laptop being leaked, that initial story, a lot of people at the time were realizing that this is crazy because for the first time you have evidence of Biden family corruption right in the open. And so what the former intelligence officials did is they went on television and they went to the journalist and said, here's a list of all of these intelligence officials that say this is Russian disinformation. It was a complete fabrication. They had no evidence for it. But as a result, the mainstream media reported this is Russian disinformation. And then they got the social media outlets and the internet essentially to censor the story. And so they made a really important story disappear. So it can work both ways. This type of influence can be used to create narratives or to suppress them, but the result is always the same and it's to protect their own power. And we can assume that this has been happening as far back as when Operation Mockingbird was exposed. Meet the press. You go on there, you say what you think is the truth or what you know is actually a lie in many of these cases, but you still say it and the media runs with it and the people believe it. Essentially, they are creating consent to go to war because first they have to sell the public on it. So it's a clear cut example of the way that that kind of consent is created artificially. But what about the stories that aren't leaked by the CIA or governments? Why did Lowe's always seem to sound the same as well? Well, it's because as it turns out, the grooming and conditioning of mainstream media journalists runs much deeper than just their sources. Turn on CNN, Fox, or NBC, and look at who they get their information from. If it's not a CIA or government official, it's usually an expert in some specific field. It's no secret that the American educational system was created to condition people to think and live in a certain way. You can watch our video on it to learn more. So that is why. And ultimately, what you have is a whole entire pipeline that creates these experts. Again, it's the universities, and they come out all thinking the same exact thing, and also being, again, part of the same class of the people that are staffing the government, that are staffing the biggest corporations in America, that are staffing the mainstream media. And so they have really this warm feeling to each other, and they're all being upheld by, again, the same power structure. Since all these experts are educated in the same system, with the same textbooks and by the same professors who all believe the same thing, their expert opinions are all naturally going to sound exactly the same. So that is why all the news that is based on their opinions is going to sound exactly the same too. And so there you have it. Most of the time, it's not a cabal of news people in a dimly lit room handing down scripts for news anchors to read like what Sinclair did. Let's be real, this probably happens sometimes. But most of the time, all the news sounds the same because everyone in the system has the incentive to push the same narrative. They all benefit, so they all play along. From the government to the intelligence officials, to the journalists, to the universities. So if this is the case, where can we go to get the truth? Well, introducing Upward News. Upward News was created by Ari to solve this exact problem, and that's why they wanted to sponsor this video. Upward News is a daily email that you can sign up for with the link below that's read by over 300,000 plus Americans who want to stay informed and get smarter about politics, all without the propaganda you get from mainstream media. They find the most important stories, simplify them, and send them straight into your inbox every weekday. I love reading Upward News because I constantly learn a ton of stuff that I don't get anywhere else. Like this story about how everyone's favorite hub website has profited off of videos of children being exploited on their sites. 
a prime example of a story that you're not going to hear on the news. And I love how quick and easy the newsletter is too. It only takes a few minutes to read and can't be censored. I cannot recommend them enough, so definitely click the link below and sign up for the free 30-day trial. Kind of one of the big things that we've talked about is that advertising is a serious problem for different media outlets. It always presents a conflict of interest, regardless of how these media outlets want to talk about it. So one of the best ways to get around this is to actually having people sign up for memberships. When people are supporting your news and they believe in it and they want you to be able to report without these kinds of conflicts of interest, it creates an incentive for you to want to actually report on the truth. It gives you the leeway and the capability of actually doing so. And so at Upward News, that's the one thing we're trying to do right now is we're trying to build up our premium subscriptions because these people support us. They want us to be able to continue reporting the truth to them. And in return, we have a lot of very good premium content and we have newsletters that make sure that you can escape the daily news cycle. You can get rid of all of the noise and truly know what's going on in just a couple of minutes every single day. And so the people that are really most passionate about being able to walk outside and understand what is happening in America rather than endlessly scrolling through Instagram, through social media, clicking through the different channels of their television, those people that just want to know the truth and don't want that hassle, they become premium subscribers and they love it. So click the link below or go to join.upward.news slash jtran for your free 30-day trial now. As one premium member put it, Upward is the first paid news subscription digital or print I've ever signed up for, and I'm wonderfully pleased. Y'all do great work. Thank you. Keep it up. Click the link below to get started now. Stay dangerous, and we'll see you in the next one.